Monsteras aren't particularly fussy plants, but there are some things they hate that might actually surprise you. Stop doing them and you'll have a very happy Monstera to be proud of in your home. Let's get straight into the first one. Misting, misting, misting. The one houseplant myth that just seems to persevere no matter what. If you're in the habit of misting your Monstera daily, then you're ruining the burgeoning relationship you are trying to develop with your plant. The idea behind misting your plants, of course, is that they need high humidity to thrive. This is the big misconception in the houseplant community. We assume just because these plants experience high humidity in the jungle where they live, that we must replicate this in our homes for them to be happy. But honestly, just how feasible is this? It's nigh on impossible to have 80% humidity in our homes 24 seven. If we did, then there would probably be untold amounts of black mold building up on the walls and around our windows in our homes, which is no good for our health. And it's not really the low humidity in our homes that does damage to monsteras, or any other plant for that matter. It's the swings in humidity. Imagine you're a person who lives in a very dry climate. You're used to the dry air and your skin and hair are always dry. One day, you go on vacation to a very humid climate. The humidity is so high that you feel like you're suffocating. You start to sweat profusely and your skin and hair become clammy. You're not used to the high humidity and it's making you very uncomfortable. Think Monica in Friends. When I go places with high humidity, it gets a little extra body, okay? In the same way, plants are not used to large swings in humidity. If the humidity in the air changes too much, it can stress the plant and make it more susceptible to disease. So, if you have monsteras in your home, then it's important to keep the humidity levels stable. So why doesn't misting work? Well. The water droplets from the mister land on the surface of the leaves and will evaporate quickly, leaving the leaves moist but not really providing any additional air humidity. The amount of evaporation given off from the wet leaves will be so minuscule that no extra humidity is provided. In fact, misting your plants can actually make them more susceptible to disease. The water droplets can create a breeding ground for fungus and bacteria which can infect the leaves. And I know what you're thinking. If monsteras are so sensitive to having water in their leaves, then how do they survive when they get constantly rained on in the jungle? Well, it's all to do with air changes. The plant is obviously outside in the jungle and is subjected to higher air changes than inside from the wind. When it stops raining, Everything dries out pretty quickly because of the wind and the high temperatures in the tropics. Inside, there are very little air changes, so moisture tends to sit on the leaves for a longer time, increasing the risk of mold and disease taking hold. Monsteras can be tricky plants to live with. They tend to go a bit out of control when they start to reach larger sizes. If you haven't got yours supported onto something like a moss pole or tied onto bamboo or planks of wood, then you're probably finding it quite hard to control. They do have a tendency to sprawl and grow out of the pot as their stems get longer and longer. And I actually found this with my smaller monstera in my living room. It had one long stem that was doing its best to leave the pot it lived in and it ended up constantly flopping from side to side whenever anyone brushed past it. It needed repotting and the stem supporting so they could start to grow vertically rather than horizontally. Now, I made a video on my Patreon page repotting this plant, but looking back on it now, I've probably made a serious mistake that the plant is hating me for. I buried the stem into the soil so they were supported by the soil rather than staking it onto a moss pole or something. You see, there was an aerial root further along the stem I was hoping that by burying the stem a little into the soil, it would encourage the aerial root to hurry up and grow into the soil, supporting the plant in the process. The plant uses aerial roots to support itself. It's generally good practice to direct them into the soil so that the plant can grow stronger. The problem is though, that burying the stems of a monstera too deep can be a problem because it can cause the stem to rot from too much moisture. The stems of a monstera are not meant to be buried in soil, and if they are, they'll potentially start to rot and die. This can be a serious problem as it can kill the plant. To avoid this problem, don't do what I did, but instead make sure that the stems of your monstera are not buried in soil. When you repot your monstera, just be sure to plant it at the same depth that it was growing in its previous pot, and don't be tempted to bury it any deeper to keep it in check. You risk the lower portion of the stems rotting, which is not really the place you want to be in. If you're unsure how deep to plant your monstera, it's always best to err on the side of caution and plant it a little bit shallower than you think it should be. 
Monsteras absolutely hate it when they are planted into a pot with coarse gravel added to the bottom instead of planted into a pot with drainage holes. This is a myth that has been around for decades and is actually harmful to your plants, especially your Monstera. The idea behind adding gravel to the bottom of the pot, of course, is they will supposedly create a barrier between the soil and the bottom of the pot where water can pool. This is supposed to prevent the roots of the plant from sitting in water, which can lead to root rot. However, this doesn't actually work for two reasons. First, it's a little known fact that water does not move easily from fine textured materials like soil to coarse textured materials like gravel. In fact, the coarser the material, the more difficult it is for water to transfer to it from the soil. Water will only move from soil to coarse gravel when the soil is fully saturated. So when you add gravel to the bottom of a pot, you end up with soggy soil that sits on top of the gravel. This can actually lead to root rot because the roots of your monstera will be sitting in waterlogged soil, the opposite of what the hack is trying to do. The best way to prevent root rot is to use a plastic nursery pot with drainage holes. This will allow excess water to drain out of the pot so the roots of the plant don't sit in water. Secondly, the assumption seems to be that once the roots hit the gravel, they'll turn around and continue growing into the soil rather than into the water. This just doesn't happen. Roots will follow the water. If there is water pooling at the bottom of the pot, then the roots will seek the water. Gravel isn't going to stop them. Monsteras are beautiful plants, but unfortunately they are magnets for dust. The monstera in my bedroom is anyway. Give it just a couple of weeks and this plant has a new thick layer of dust on all the stems and all the leaves. You can understand why when you look at the plant, those big gorgeous leaves are perfect places for dust to settle. This, however, spells trouble for your plant. One of the most important things you can do to keep your monstera healthy is to remove dust from the leaves regularly. Dust can block the pores of the leaves, which prevents the plant from absorbing sunlight and carbon dioxide and this could lead to stunted growth. I'm sure you all remember this from your school days but as a quick recap, photosynthesis is the process by which plants use sunlight to convert carbon dioxide and water into oxygen and energy in the form of sugar. This process is essential for plant growth and survival. The pores on the leaves are called stomata. Stomata allows plants to take in carbon dioxide and release oxygen. They also allow water to evaporate from the leaves. So when dust builds up on leaves, it can block the stomata. This prevents the plant from taking in carbon dioxide and releasing oxygen. It also prevents the plant from evaporating water. Photosynthesis requires sunlight. So if your monstera is not getting enough sunlight because there's a thick layer of dust on the leaves, not be able to photosynthesize properly. So grab yourself a damp cloth, give your monstera a clean every couple of weeks and be sure to wipe or brush the leaves gently so you don't damage them. If you live in a dusty environment then you may need to clean it more often and your plant will love you for it. A sign that your monstera is not happy is a distinct lack of fenestrations and perforations in the leaves. And to recap, fenestrations are the slits in the leaves and perforations are the holes in the center of the leaves. Fenestrations are much easier to come by as long as you give the plant lots of good light, but perforations on the other hand are far trickier to get, particularly if you don't have the rarer large form variety. The better light you give your monstera, the quicker it will produce leaves with perforations. And the perfect example of this is comparing the monstera in my bedroom to the monstera in my living room. The one in my living room has a glorious leaf with perforations in, whereas the one in my bedroom does not have any, despite it being a more mature plant. You might think they are different varieties, but the funny thing is that these are actually the same plant. The one in my living room is a cutting from the bedroom monstera that I took two years ago. It's the fact that the one in my living room receives better light that has got perforations in the leaves. They both face west, but the bedroom one sits a couple of meters from the window and the living room one sits on the windowsill. And this makes a huge difference. And there is one hack that has really allowed this sliding doors moment to happen that goes against the prevailing wisdom for houseplants. And in this video here, I share what it is, so make sure you click on the link.